Morning, Coach. Thanks Good. for a few minutes of your time. Uh, we will uh, take our first question today from Ross Martin. Hey, Coach Bateman. Happy holidays and Merry Christmas. I wanted to ask about the 2022 sign. Um, obviously, some big names on D, including Shaw. Your thoughts on the class, expression of the defensive end, and anything in particular about the players that you recruited that you like or want to comment on? Um, yeah, we're really excited about those guys. I mean, obviously, Travis, um, you know, I, I, like, I think I, was, I think Travis was the first kid I watched when I got hired, you know, and he was the freshman at the time. And we were just like, look, this kid's going to be one of the top, you know, we, we think he's one of the top five or six players in the country. And, and it was true. So I think, you know, Lonnie, Lonnie Galloway and Tim Frost did a great job recruiting him, Coach Brown. Um, you know, obviously, he, you know, we think he's got a chance to impact our team immediately. Um, we felt like we had to get some guys that, that, that had real edge, you know, edge rush, outside backer potential in this class. Um, you know, Bo Atkinson's here practicing with us right now. Really excited about him. You know, I can't tell you how many you know, high school coaches in North Carolina, and I got a lot of respect for the high school coaches in North Carolina, have called me and said, man, Atkinson is a dude. Um, and then the second guy they've called me about is Malachi Hambrick, who I think was MVP of two state title games. You know, so you're talking about a kid, you know, in the biggest game is going to play. And then Bryson Jennings is a kid that, you know, with, with I think, a, a huge upside. Um, you know, Sebastian Cheeks, you know, Tommy did a great job recruiting him. You know, a national recruit, a kid who could go anywhere in the country, really. You know, big linebacker. He'll be here in a, you know, a couple of weeks. We're excited about him. Um, Deuce, we're really excited about at an inside backer. And, and, and I think the three DBs, you know, you know, Tayon and, and, and Marcus and then, and then Will, you know, we're fortunate to get Will at the end. I, I think those are three really smart, long, fast DBs. And I think we've been able to, to sign some of those guys. And it's, it's starting to show up in the secondary, I think, right now for us. Okay, uh, Andrew Jones, go ahead. Oh. Hey, Ross, Coach, you, can I yeah, get I one more question? Before? Go ahead, Ross. Sorry. Sorry. Um, yeah, I think it might be a little delayed here with the audio. Um. With, with Travis, is he practicing with y'all for the bowl? Do you know if that's going to happen? And how beneficial is it to get a player like him with his size in in the spring to help y'all for next season? Yeah, I mean, I, I I think he'll be here for bowl practice. We're still trying to figure everything out. You know, it's kind of we're kind of the mercy of the academic. You know, when he when they officially graduate high school a little bit, but um, yeah, to get Travis here in the spring is huge. You know, I, I think you know to get him here with Brian Hess working out and, and working with Tim, I think would be huge. So. I think every chance to get to get a big kid in in the spring is huge for us. Okay, over to Andrew Jones. Hey, Coach, when you go back to the second half against Pitt and then what you guys did basically for 58 minutes against State, how encouraged are you that the vision that you had that this defense could become maybe started taking shape a little bit here late in the season? Um, yeah, I I think we I, I think we made some strides. I, I think um. I think we were able to play what we're good at more. And, and I think that's going to be really important going forward, you know, and um, I think the D line really started to show up. I mean, I, I felt like the D line against NC state was a pretty dominant force. And uh, I think that'll just continue. You know, I, I think obviously, you know, adding those kids we just talked about, especially Travis to it. And then you, you look at what Kevin Hester and I, you know, I look at how much miles Murphy's improved. I just think the inside kids are, are going to be really good. And we got to find a way to, replace the production we're getting from Taman. But, uh, yeah, I, I do. I think we're making progress. I think that middle part of the year was really disappointing. And I, and I think our kids learned a lot of lessons, and I think we've, we've really improved. And, and you mentioned before about how the front needs to get better, and you just alluded to it there. In your defense, um, how, how obviously the front's important, but how important is it to sort of setting everything up for the rest of the defensive unit? And with that being said, are guys like – Miles Murphy and Keyshawn and Javari all making the kind of progress that you want to see to give you the kind of anticipation that, yeah, next year that group might be ready to be what you hoped it would be all along. You know, I, I think in college football, well, to be really good on defense, you have to have a really good front. You know, and I think you look at the four teams in the playoffs, they've got really good front defenders, you know. And um, and I I do believe, you know, I think the improvement Javari Ritzy's made um, it's off the charts. I mean, like, like working with him these last, you know, eight, nine practices, like it's off the charts. So I, I just, you know, he's a true freshman. So, um, you know, he's really improved. Obviously, you know, we're very happy with Miles. Um, you know, Keyshawn, I think, has improved, 
you know, Keyshawn's had some injury things and some nagging things, nothing major, but I think he's improved. He's got a ton of reps these last eight, nine practices. So um, go, going to, you know, getting to a bowl and being able to practice as much as we've been able to practice. And, you know, and we've practiced hard. You know, I, I think Coach Brown's done a great job of, of managing our kids, you know, some of the older kids, but getting the younger kids some real work. I mean, I feel like we've had another spring practice with these guys. So um, I'm excited about the front. I think, I, I, you know, I, I think it's going to be a real strength of our team here starting next year. Thank you. Yes, sir. See y'all, Brown. Jay, I wanted to ask you about South Carolina and, and kind of what the preparation is like, given that um, uh, they're – Late year starter Jason Brown entered the portal, so he's not going to be playing. And just kind of the the guesswork going with um, how much of the package changes because you know that Nolan might be the starter, or maybe they'll go back to Doty, or or just you know how how you look at at all of this. A great question. You, you know, I I don't know how much the offense changed. As, a, as an overall picture with the, with the three quarterbacks. Um, I think with Doty, it was probably a little bit more quarterback run than the other two. Um, but, you know, we've, we've prepared for, for the, the body of the offense, but we've talked to our kids about, you know, we've got to be ready for, you know, Wildcat, you know, number five, at the receiver at quarterback. we got to be ready for all of it. And uh, I think that's the great thing about a bowl game is people get two weeks to prepare for you and you better have a good answer to things. So, um, you know, the, the thing, you know, you know Coach Brown, I, I feel like our bowl plans have been awesome, like just how we've practiced, how we've prepared, um, you know, since I've been here. And I, this year's been no different. So I, I'm excited to see our kids play. I think we'll play really hard. And, uh, I, yeah, I think we'll be ready for, you know, all the, the new things they're going to throw at us. Yeah, and, and you mentioned that extra time. Like, how much do you just get into the minutes? Like, do you literally watch every every snap that they've played from this season? Like, does, does it get that technical? Or, you know, is it more about doing what you guys do well and, you know, the rest kind of takes care of itself? I mean, CL, I watch every, everybody we play is every rep, right? But, um, you know, with, with our players, we try to break it down to, you know, defenses that we think are more structurally similar to us. And then, uh, and then we try to say, okay, look, this is how we're going to defend them, and this is what we do. And you know, we focus on certain calls more than others, depending on the opponent. But um, yeah, I think you be careful in bowl games, like saying, like, oh man, this is what they do, right? Because they're going to watch their film too. We, you know, we we watched our film on defense and said, man, we're doing this on third down a lot. We're doing this in the red zone a lot. Whatever the situation may be, and you try to fix it. So I, I think in bowl game, you know, Coach Brown tells us all the time, you got you got to treat it like the first game of the season and. You know, you have a, an idea of how they're going to attack you. You have an idea of what their offense is, but you better be able to do what you do well and and, and, and control your own destiny a little bit with how you play. And I think that's kind of been our message for our kids this these last eight, nine practices. Thanks. Yes, sir. Michael Coe. Hey, Coach. So with uh, Storm confirming that he would be coming back next year, how excited is he to sort of get a full year of – starting under his belt and how excited are you to have him uh, back in the fold for another season? Yeah, I was going to, my first answer was going to be, he's not as excited as I am, but um, no, I mean, the storm's awesome. Like I'm, I'm sitting here right now watching him work with our two young corners. Yeah. You know, after practice. I and mean, he, you know, so I think to have a, a player of his caliber and his leadership back for a year for another year is, is exciting for us. And uh, with Kyler uh, sitting out the bowl game, who do you anticipate sort of moving up into his slot uh, for the game? Um, you know, I, I think we could put Trey Morrison out there. I think he'll probably play corner some. Um, Obi Igbuna has been a kid who's, who's really improved. We feel really strongly about it. And then I think the two freshmen, you know, Dante Balfour's blade, and we're really excited about him. And and I think it's been great for him to get these practices and we put them with the ones. And so, I mean, I think Dante Balfour will play. Um, some, but we, 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 we've got candidates back there and uh, Ray's done a great job building depth of that room. We're, we're not, we feel pretty confident about that group. Thank you. Yes, sir. Over to Dina King. Hey coach, you mentioned defensive line. Uh, how difficult is it for a freshman defensive lineman to get comfortable and uh, what's the biggest adjustments that they have to get face to get on the field? Um. You know, Dina, so, like, we've been, we've been fortunate. Most of our D-linemen have been kids that have been able to come in for spring practice. And, and, I, and I think that's really helped them because, the, you know, the, they're not just always the, 
you know, the biggest, strongest guy anymore. And so I think they get here and they realize, man, I gotta, I gotta really work now. Um, so I think, you know, Travis coming in and, and Bo coming in and, and Malachi coming in and being able to, you know, be with coach Hess and his, and his crew. And, uh, and then be with, you know, Coach Cross and Coach DeWitt and, and, and work in spring practice, I think has been huge. You know, the, the biggest thing with defensive linemen, I think, versus like, you know, being in the secondary or linebacker is it's a little bit less um, knowledge based. It's a little bit more physical readiness, you know. So I think when you have a kid who you feel like is physically closer to being ready, like Javari was, I mean, Javari was physically very ready to come play and he's played you know, pretty significant snaps the whole year. So I, I think when you're physically ready as a D lineman, you have a better chance to play early. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. All right, we'll close up today. Uh, back over to Ross Martin for one last question. Hey, Coach. Yeah, we haven't really talked to you since the NC State game. So I was wondering how you approach kind of the mistakes made at the end there against NC State. Um, like how long have you spent on that? What do you do? How do you coach that? Uh, or I guess coach that out of them, kind of the issues there? Um, you know, Ross, that's a great question. I appreciate you asking that. Um, you know, ultimately, it, it's it's on us, right? It's on me. It's on me as coaches and the, the rest of the coaches. Right? Ultimately, it's when, when we get in those situations, we we've got to play the coverage the right way. And um, and I think our kids have pride in in how, in how they how they compete and how they prepare. And you know, I I think when you make a mistake like that, the, the, you got to own it. You got to come back in. You got to watch it. You can say, why did this happen? And then um. And you got to move forward from it. And I think that, that's what we've tried to do, you know, and um, you know, it wasn't it wasn't easy. It was a hard thing to, to to think about and watch and all that stuff. But, you know, you got to learn from it. And I, and I think we will. Great, Jay. Thanks for spending a few minutes with us today. Appreciate it. Yes, sir. Thank you.